The views expressed on this program are not necessarily the views of Lexington Community Radio or its board of directors. The views expressed are solely those of the programmers. You are listening to Off the Cuff. Cuff. Now, here's your host, Adam Banks. everybody to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for listening to the show and thank you for tuning in to WLXU 93.9 FM. In addition to listening on the radio, you can check out our Facebook live stream at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks or you can stream the show live from the station website at radiolex.us to listen to the show from anywhere in the entire world. I am broadcasting from the Deborah Hensley Studios here at Radio Lex on North Limestone. It is July the 11th, 2024, 401 to be exact. We are back from a holiday. The 4th of July was on a Thursday this year, so we took the day off to allow everybody to spend that time with family. I see people are still joining the show thread here. Wade says AT&T time. Uh, I love that. Wade just had a birthday pass. I meant, to, I meant to mention that a couple of weeks ago on the air. One of my biggest supporters. Happy birthday, Wade. Thank you guys, everybody, for tuning in once again. So much to catch up on. So much to talk about. And folks, the last time we was on the show... I talked about the upcoming presidential debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. It was the first of two debates that the two will be having, and my oh my, was it not a disaster. Now, debates are very important. Debates are often about optics. It's how the candidates present themselves. Debates are about how the candidates defend their records and how candidates... Uh, compare their uh, parties and 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 they combat their attacks on debates. That's what debates are supposed to be about. But this debate was just a disaster from the beginning. And I think a lot of people are now worried after watching the debate of what is to come. I think the elephant in the room was the lack of cognitive ability of our current sitting president Joe Joe Biden. I knew. He was declining at a rapid rate. I knew that he was not as sharp as he once was, but I really did not have any idea it was as bad as it is. And the debate revealed that. And a lot of people since then have been calling for Joe Biden to step aside. I think if Joe Biden has any... Character, And I think if Joe Biden really cares for this country, he will do what's best for this country. And that is step aside. Imagine four more years of that cognitive ability. Imagine all of that decline happening within the next four years. I shudder to think what could happen. So neither candidate is the official nominee yet. That doesn't technically take place, folks, until the national conventions. The Democratic convention is coming up very soon. The Republican convention is coming up very soon. It is at the convention is when the parties officially announce a person as their official candidate. You have to be endorsed by a party or you're not going to win. I can't think of the last time a non-Republican or Democrat won the presidency. If it's happened before, it was in the 1800s. It's been a long, long time. But neither candidate is the official nominee yet, so it is. St- there is still time for the Democrats to find somebody to replace Joe Biden. And I just, I, the question is, who shall it be? Well, that's for the Democrats to get together and decide on who it should be. If how Biden sounded wasn't bad enough, The visuals might have been equally as bad. A lot of the times Joe Biden would just, when he was not, when he was asked a question or when he was not being asked a question, he would just stare off into space like he was looking at nothing. His mouth was wide open and it was just very alarming. And I would never want to feel like that I am smarter than the president. And that has never happened to me until Joe Biden. I've always felt like the president 
uh, regardless of who he was or what party he was from, was always smarter than I was until the sitting president we have now. I'm sure at one point in time, Joe Biden was a very sharp man and very much more smarter than me. But not today. He's not. And that's bad when I think that I, me, could do a better job running the country than our sitting president. I think the format of the debate backfired. I know that it was Biden's people that wanted the uh, format to be exactly like it was set up. No audience, uh, the, the mics being muted, and it did nothing but make Joe Biden look bad the entire time. Um, so here are a few sound bites of the disastrous uh, debate that took place against Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Uh, let's go through these really quick. I think one of the first things that really kind of shocked people was just the moment when Joe Biden completely lost his train of thought, when he completely lost his train of thought when he was speaking about certain issues. Take a listen. Child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. I mean, he completely lost his train of thought. And you could see it happening. You could see the whole time when he, he knew he had lost his train of thought. And he was sitting there thinking, like, my goodness. And when he loses his train of thought, he just says, look. And then he tries to think of something else quickly to say. And it just it doesn't work out very good for him. It doesn't. And I uh, that was not all, folks. Take a listen at this next clip where he Joe Biden calls Donald Trump a sucker, calls Donald Trump a loser. This isn't Donald Trump calling Joe Biden a loser, Joe Biden a sucker. Donald Trump, for the most part, was well-behaved. He never called Joe Biden any negative, negative names. He never poked fun at him. There was one comment, which we'll get to in just a second, but it was Joe Biden who was the one that was name-calling during the debate. Take a listen. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery he refused to go to. He was standing with his four-star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. I mean, come on. You have to be able to control your temper. Uh, your temper. You have to be able to control, uh, regardless of how you feel about a person, the fact that the president looks at the person running against him and calls him a loser and a sucker is just inappropriate. And everybody wants to get on Trump for his mouth and for his name calling and back calling. Well, what was Joe Biden doing just there? The same thing. You're the loser. You're the sucker. It was like he couldn't contain his his anger. I want somebody, I want a president that is able to maintain their anger. What about what about the spar that they had over golf? Both a ridiculous on both parts. Well, I took two tests, cognitive tests. I aced them, both of them, as you know. It's, we made it public. He took none. I'd like to see him take one, just one. Oh. I just won two club championships, not even senior, two regular club championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart, and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, <laughs> down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. The crime. <laughs> I mean, are we really debating about golf during the debate? And it was Joe Biden who brought up the whole golf spat. That wasn't a Trumpism. That wasn't Trump bringing up golf. That was Joe Biden bringing up the golf. I don't know. And, and here's the last thing that happened that I found just completely disastrous. And that is when Joe Biden was talking and then he completely made no sense at the end. And this is the one time Trump spoke up and said, I'm not sure what he said at the end. I'm not sh quite sure he even knows what he said at the end. I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40 percent fewer people coming across the border illegally. That's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump, 
Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, <laughs> uh, that's the only thing that he said that really that really was kind of a bash towards Biden as far as his cognitive ability. Uh, one more here. This is when uh, Joe Biden accuses Trump of his affair, uh, sleeping with a porn star, which was just take a listen. So you are still charged with and think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife was pregnant? I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. I did like that line. He's got the morals of an alley cat. And then uh, finally, uh, this is when Trump says that nobody respects America anymore since Joe Biden has been put into office. Take a listen. We are very, very close to World War III, and he's driving us there. And Kim Jong-un and uh, President Xi of China, Kim Jong-un of North Korea, uh, all of these, Putin, they don't respect him. They don't fear him. They have nothing going with this gentleman, and he's going to drive us into World War III. You want a World War III, let him follow and win and let Putin say, do what you want, NATO. The whole country is exploding because of you, because they don't respect you and they have to respect their president and they don't respect you throughout the world. Insane. What a disastrous debate it was. I think that Trump hands down won the debate. I think that if anything, Joe Biden at this point, the fact I I would almost call this elder abuse if this is people pushing him towards the candidacy. But Joe Biden, a lot of people have been trying to push him out, push him out of being the president of the United States. A lot of people are or being the nominee. Well, he's the current sitting. People are wanting him to just not seek re election. And folks, that is okay to not want to seek re-election if it's for the betterment of the country. Like I said at the beginning of the show, if Joe Biden had any love or any character for this country, he would step aside and let somebody else run. He's already been the president for four years. He'll always forever be a former president the rest of his life. And sometimes, you know what? That would be pretty daggone cool, wouldn't it, to be a former president, to have that status without the pressure? So the fact that he still wants to be the nominee says a lot. And it made me start thinking of back when Lyndon B. Johnson announced back in 1968 that he would no longer seek re-election for the presidency because he was the current sitting president. But he felt like because of just where he was at in his life, mentally, physically, he wasn't going to be the best man for the job. Think about that. Lyndon B. Johnson, who had all of his faculties, Lyndon B. Johnson, who had, uh, who, who was very much aware and alert, he decided in 1968 to not re-seek the election. Even though he was the sitting president, he said, you know what? I'm not going to run again. And it was mainly because the public didn't want him to run. Uh, They were frustrated with the Vietnam War. Uh, They were frustrated with the economy. And he initially sought to, to seek the election. He initially wanted to. But he decided after he took a step back and he looked at what was the betterment for the country, Lyndon B. Johnson said, you know what? Even though I'm the current sitting president, I'm not going to seek re-election. Take a listen for yourself. This is Lyndon B. Johnson in his own words. March 31st, 1968. With America's future under challenge right here at home, with our hopes and the world's hopes for peace and the balance every day, I do not believe that I should devote an hour or a day of my time to any personal partisan causes or to any duties other than the awesome duties of this office, the presidency of your country. And Joe Biden says, I dare anyone to tell me to resign. I dare anyone to come at me and tell me to resign. Accordingly, I shall not seek, and I will not accept, 
the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Joe Biden, once again, I'll reiterate, said, I dare you to come tell me I shouldn't run. But let men everywhere know, however, that a strong and a confident and a vigilant America stands ready tonight to seek an honorable peace and stands ready tonight to defend an honored cause, whatever the price, whatever the burden, whatever the sacrifice that duty may require. Thank you for listening. Good night. And God bless all of you. Now, that sounds like somebody who has all of his faculties, especially if you're comparing him to Joe Biden. But you see the difference there between Lyndon B. Johnson and Joe Biden? That's the difference. You've got a person who loved America, Lyndon B., and then you've got a person who obviously doesn't have America's best interest. If the Democrats want any chance of winning this election, they've got to pick somebody else. Folks, we have a great show ahead of you today. Stick with us. You are listening to Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. We will be right back. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. It is not the United States president coming out, which is normally what you would expect when you hear hail to the chief. This is the theme that they play when the president walks out. Such a patriotic theme. It's played by many different bands, the U.S. The US Marine Band, the military, uh, any type of military band will play this. Folks, here on Off the Cuff, political season is officially officially underway and we are slap dab in the middle of it so there will be some political talk sprinkled in from now until the election and folks we started off the show talking about the first presidential debate whether or not there'll be a second one only time will tell we even got to see who the candidates are officially first well we know trump's going to be the republican but will biden be the democratic nominee Only time will tell. But folks, even though that that debate will go down in infamy, it was an infamous debate for presidencies, there have been a lot of infamous moments in presidential history. What does the word famous, infamous mean? Well, it's the kind of opposite of famous. Infamous is basically something that people know of that's really bad, kind of disastrous. And believe it or not, there have been a lot of presidential moments in history that have been infamous. And if we go back and look at all of them from George Washington days uh, to Andrew Jackson to, to, to people before the television, it would be hard to talk about, especially on the radio. But ever since the creation of television, we have been able to capture a lot of these infamous presidential moments on television. So that's what I would like to talk about today on the show with you guys is some of the most infamous TV moments in presidential history. Now, I created a list going back all the way back to when the television first existed with the presidents. I know that the first televised debate was between John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon, and that is really when presidents were seen on TV was during that time, during the 60s, during the 70s. So the first infamous presidential moment that I would like to talk about throughout time goes back to, you guessed it, Richard Nixon during the Watergate scandal and, of course, his resignation. So... Very few times does a president get humiliated in front of the world, but it happens, and things were no different for Richard Nixon. He was the first, really, to experience this humiliation because of the power of television, and it was during his re-election, during 1972, that his administration 
and his campaign orchestrated this wiretapping of the Democratic Party headquarters, and it happened in the Watergate Hotel, and basically it was a very crooked thing to do. Well, when Richard Nixon was confronted about it, he gave the infamous I am not a crook speech. Uh, Take a listen. And I want to say this to the television audience. I made my mistakes, but in all of my years of public life, I have never profited, never profited from public service. I've earned every cent. And in all of my years of public life, I have never obstructed justice. And I think, too, that I can say that in my years of public life, that I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. And then after he said it, he crossed his arms. The nonverbal was off the chain there. If you know anything about nonverbal, crossing your arms after making a statement is just screaming to the audience that you are not telling the truth or you have something to hide. And obviously, he was hiding. He was a crook. He was behind the whole Watergate scandal, which led to this, this next humiliating moment for Richard Nixon when he actually had to resign from being the president. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Unbelievable. And uh, I could only imagine living during that time, watching that transition of power take place, because I had never, I've still never seen a transition of power take place while a current sitting president still had time left in his term. Of course, I've seen different presidents take office, but never have I seen a president just leave in the middle of his office and another president take over. So that would have been fascinating to see, but a very humiliating time and a very infamous time in presidential history. And that comes from Richard Nixon. Now, next up on my list is one of the most infamous presidential moments in the history of U.S. politics. Comes from the Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton scandal and impeachment. Everybody knows about this. This happened back in 1998 when Bill Clinton had an affair with Monica Lewinsky, a White House intern. Bill Clinton was obviously married to the First Lady Hillary Clinton, and he denied the allegations. He said he did not have sexual relations with Monica. She was making everything up. It was rumors. It was lies. All while just flat out lying to the American people. Take a listen at the infamous Bill Clinton in his own words. Now, I have to go back to work on my State of the Union speech. And I worked on it till pretty late last night. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Thank you. You know, Bill Clinton was a really good liar. I almost believed him. Just re-watching it, even though I know what happened, I'm sitting here believing him. I'm like, man, my goodness, what a liar. What a liar. Maybe one of the best liars we've had in office is Bill Clinton because he totally lied about it. And it had been more than a century since a president had been impeached. And I'm talking about Andrew Johnson back in the 1800s. But he became the Bill Clinton became the second president in the history of presidents to be impeached by Congress in 1998, and it was all due to that affair. But I think what really hurt Clinton's legacy with that scandal was exactly what you just heard: the fact that he lied to the American people. I think if he would have got in front of the camera and just admitted to his wrongdoings, I think more people would have been acceptable of that because Hillary was going to forgive him regardless because she did. We know what she did. She forgave him. She stayed with him. And I think that if Hillary was fine with it, the rest of the country should be with it, right? If her, if his wife's fine with it. So... I think if he would have just come out and said, you know what, I slept with that intern, it was a mistake, it was a 
error in judgment, and I apologize, he would have been fine. But of course, he was caught up in his lie, and he had to go in front of the national television audience and say this. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Ms. Lewinsky that was not appropriate. <laughs> in fact, it was wrong. It constituted a critical lapse in judgment and a personal failure on my part for which I am solely and completely responsible. I'm there you go. I misled people, including even my wife. Yes, you did. And people really got on Clinton for that. I think that it just kind of turned up the voltage on that whole scandal, I think the fact that he lied is what really irritated the American people. And what a scandal, folks, that was. It was definitely a scandal. And I think that um, the next television scan or the next television infamous moment uh, in presidential history comes from the... 80s, and this is when George W. or George H. W. Bush, George H. W. is the older Bush, when George H. W. infamously went on television and said for everybody to look at his lips and read them, he said there will be no new taxes, and which was a big deal during his campaign uh, because he was running against Bill Clinton at the time. He was trying to reseek his seat as president. And he told everybody that there was not going to be any new taxes added during his presidency over the next four years. Well, guess what? There were, in fact, several new taxes. Uh, George H.W. Bush's backtrack on this promise lost him the support of many, many, many people who were already with him because this betrayed him as very, very untrustworthy. And this ultimately contributed to his re-election defeat. Take a listen to George H.W. Bush getting on television in this infamous moment, telling everybody to read his lips, no new taxes. And I'm the one who will not raise taxes. My opponent now says he'll raise them as a last resort or a third resort. But when a politician talks like that, you know that's one resort he'll be checking into. And I... My opponent... My opponent won't rule out raising taxes, but I will and the Congress will push me to raise taxes and I'll say no. And they'll push and I'll say no. And they'll push again and I'll say... To them, read my lips. No new taxes. Kind of a hard thing to go backtrack on when you say something like that. I mean, you really can't backtrack when you say that. And that's exactly what he did. There were there was several new taxes. And um, so actually, it wasn't the fact that he was running against Bill Clinton. This was actually during... Um, this was, I believe this was the first time he was running for president. And then when he got elected, he raised all these taxes. And then it was after that, which is pretty much got it beat because the Clinton administration really drove that home. They called him a liar. They called him untrustworthy and uh, so forth. Of course, on the list, Donald Trump and the insurrection of the Capitol makes the list. Very infamous moment when the Capitol was pretty much uh, under attack on that day. Several people died uh, during this a horrible incident. Uh, it took place on um, it was January 6th, 2021. Uh, Donald Trump encouraged uh, followers of his to go to the Capitol and protest. And it was because of that that caused this mess. And I don't support this at all. And I think that the fact that he told people to go and, I don't know, give them hell, whatever it was he said at the Capitol, um, was just wrong. And I think that people who think that was right really need to get their morals involved. They really do. They need to get their uh, their self situated. Um, so, I was looking for the clip of where he was trying to tell people to attack the capital, capital, but I can't find it. Um, 
I don't think he said to officially attack the Capitol. I think he just said go protest, uh, which I can't find it. But that, folks, is several different clips of infamous television moments uh, in presidential history. And that's not going to be the last. There's going to be more. And there are more than what I just named. That's just all the ones that I had time to get to today. And those are just the ones that were on TV Oh, you talk about scandal. The the ones that were not on TV, very scandalous. And I'm sure we'll have more throughout time. But folks, we are going to take another quick break. Stick with us. You are listening to Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. We'll be right back. Splish, splash, I was taking a bath. Long about a Saturday night. Yeah. A rough dub, just relaxing in the tub. Thinking everything was all right. When I stepped out the tub Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. A little oldie there. Splish Splash. You gotta love music back from that time. I was always a big fan of taking baths when I was a kid. Then when I got older, you realize that bathing in the bathtub is probably not the cleanest way to wash yourself. Because you're really just sitting in dirty water, and then when you stand up, you've got all that dirt still on you. Showers are definitely more effective. But folks, today is July the 11th. And July the 11th, around the world, is National Swimming Pool Day. Or at least held here in the United States. National Swimming Pool Day falls on July 11th each year, and it's not just a celebration of swimming pools, but also of all the paraphernalia that accompanies pools, such as the pool toys, the accessories, and swimwear. Think back to your favorite pool memories. We've all got them. Was it at a birthday party? Was it a barbecue at 4th of July? Was it going to the water park? Everybody's got a swimming pool memory. So... Celebrate it today because today is National Swimming Pool Day. Little history of swimming pools. The first swimming pool was invented in 3000 BC. Monhano Jadero is the site where the oldest swimming pool was discovered. In 100 BC, the first heated pool was built. In 1844, the Maidstone Swimming Club in Kent, England is formed, the first of its kind. Uh, how to celebrate a swimming pool day. You could obviously take a dip in the pool. Uh, you could opt for a luxury pool experience. Maybe go to a spa, get in a hot tub, get in a jacuzzi. They're forms of a pool. Uh, maybe you could visit a water park. Water parks are a great place to go for families. It's a great place to go to have fun, to entertain, and literally bake in the sun and get sunburned. Uh, there are different kinds of pools that you'll want to experience sometime in your life. One of those is an infinity pool. An infinity pool is one of those things that give the illusion that there's no water's edge, that pools are usually just running over into the ocean or running over into uh, the abyss. Uh, infinity pools, are they look really cool. Jacuzzis or hot tubs. I always opt for a jacuzzi or a hot tub before I would a swimming pool. If I go to a hotel and I see that there is a swimming pool and I see that there is a hot tub, I'm going hot tub every time. I'm going hot tub every time. Uh, There are rock pools, also known as tide pools. Those are the natural pools by the sea that exist as pools during low tide. There's grotto pools, which are often hidden and only accessible from the water. They also usually have a waterfall feature. And then hot spring pools are produced by uh, heated groundwater. These pools contain minerals and can be amazed uh, are amazing for a soak. So if you want to soak... Um, So enjoy National Swimming Pool today, and there could be several reasons of why you want to celebrate it. Maybe you want to show off that summer bod that you've been working on, or you want to learn how to swim, or you want to just show off your new swimwear, your bathing suit, or your swim trunks. That's the day. uh, Today is the day to do it. But folks... It is now time to take Off the Cuff's Song of the Week break. And how about a little newbie by my girl here, Billie Eilish, 
and I'm not going to lie, folks, I'm digging this song right here, Birds of a Feather. It's her new song. We'll be back after the song. Stick with us. The Shining was always one of my favorite horror movies, and I watch it every year around Halloween. Uh, Shelley Duvall was the mom from Shining. She was the lady standing on the other side of the door when Jack Nicholson broke through it and said, here's Johnny. Well, the actress, Shelley Duvall, who played the mom, unfortunately passed away today. Um, She, or she... And what's weird is she was born July 7th. She died so close to her birthday at the age of 75 years old, uh, which is uh, just tragic. I know that she suffered from mental illness. I know that Dr. Phil had an interview with her about 15 years ago, and he got a lot of flack because he exploited her mental illness. And when I say mental illness, I'm telling you folks, she was not the same Shelley Duvall the one that we knew, the one that we saw from The Shining. She was a completely different person. And so I don't really know exactly what the cause of death was. I just know that she was having issues anyway. Uh, She was also olive oil in the Pie Pie movie. So known for a few things, but I hated to hear that she passed away. Definitely might have to throw in The Shining uh, for her tribute. But folks, we have more Off the Cuff with Adam Banks coming at you live after these words. We have one more segment to go. Stick with us. Everybody to off the cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Last segment of the hour. This is our first episode of June. We've been off for the last couple of weeks due to the holiday. But looking back on June, folks, a lot of things happened. And a lot of the things we've talked about, we've addressed on the show, but there was so much that happened in June that we didn't even get to talk about. So how about a little June recap? For instance, back in June the 7th, Just barely over a month ago, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence released their fourth installment of the Bad Boys franchise movies. It was Bad Boys 4, which debuted at the box office at $56 million. I've heard a lot of good things about Bad Boys 4. I've heard it was the best one yet. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think at this point, though, you're going to have to kill one of the characters, right? Right? Or are we really going to do a Bad Boys 5 of them being 60 years old, 70 years old, being cops? I have not seen it yet, but I'm excited to see it based off the reviews. Plus, I love both those actors. June the 11th, President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was convicted on three felony charges related to the purchase of a revolver in 2018. On June 13, Elon Musk annoyed ex-followers or Twitter followers, users, whatever you want to say. He annoyed all of us once again by privating likes. That's right. When you private or when you like something on X now, nobody can see it. All of your likes are private. I semi like that, but then again, I liked looking at what everybody else liked because it gave me more content to look at. Now, when I like something, I'm cool that people don't see that I liked it. You're going to have to retweet it if you want them to see it. But if you like something on X now, nobody's going to be able to see that you've liked it. So a lot of people who loved uh, inappropriate content will love this because they were always afraid to like it before because everybody could see what you liked. But now on X, nobody can see what you like, so like away. Elon Musk thought it was a good idea. I I don't really want to say it was a bad idea. Elon Musk has brought change to the platform X. He changed the name for crying out loud. It used to be Twitter, one of the most recognizable social media sites in the world. He changed the name. And I think a lot of people are just naturally going to challenge anything that is thrown their way when it's different. Change people don't like naturally. So I think anytime there's change, people are just at first not going to like it, but you'll get used to it. And if the likes come back, if we've been used to not having them for two years, everybody's going to be like, hey, that's crazy. That invasion of privacy. 
But anyway, June the 14th, Kate Middleton shared a rare public update on her health amid her cancer treatment, saying that she's making good progress. That's really good to hear. On June 18th, Justin Timberlake was arrested and charged with the DWI. We've already talked about that in great detail. JT was actually just down the road from me two days ago at Rupp Arena performing at his one of his concert stops at Rupp Arena. On June 18th, the same day as Justin Timberlake being here, Baseball Hall of Famer Willie Mays dies at the age of 93, quite possibly one of the greatest baseball players of all time. If I was making a list of great baseball players throughout history, Willie Mays is on the top five list. And what a life, 93 years old. Nothing to scoff at. And then finally, on June 27th, CNN aired the first U.S. presidential debate ahead of the November election. And folks, that's going to wrap up the June recap. Something that I didn't put on the list uh, because it was something local. We had a shooting here in Lexington during the 4th of July parade. And there's not been much, much coverage of it. No one died from the shooting, but I think it's ridiculous that here in Lexington, we can't even go to places like parades, a 4th of July parade, a place where people bring their little tiny kids to get candy. There's people that want to go and shoot. There was a shooting the other day in Florence, Kentucky, and there were people that got shot and killed in that. So it's just, it happens everywhere. But it happens a lot here in Lexington, and it's just very scary. you got to think twice before you go anywhere. But a lot happened in June, and a lot, I'm sure, will happen in July. you just got to stay tuned. But, folks, that pretty much wraps up another episode of Off the Cuff. If you liked what you heard today, you'll probably like our previous episodes. So give us a follow on podcast. We are on Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you stream your favorite podcast. All you got to do is type in Off the Cuff with Adam Banks and click the follow button. And after you follow the show, do me a favor. Go comment and give me a ranking. Hopefully a five-star ranking. But rank the show five stars and give me a little comment. Because apparently when you do that, that's how you move up the Apple charts. You have to have people... Not only follow your show, but you have to have them subscribe and like or or, or give you a five star and write you a review. So please do that. Also, you can follow the show on social media. Off the Cuff with Adam Banks is the handle. We are on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. And then you can follow me, the host, on social media at The Adam Banks. I am on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We release new episodes every Thursday from 4 to 5 right here on WLXU 93.9 FM, which means we will be back same time, same place, 4 o'clock right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Adam Banks, the king of radio, and this is Off the Cuff. I will catch you down the road. On ways to thaw your heart, the future glides, I hope.